guys, welcome to the ACH Automotive channel. We're back working on our 2005 Mazda 6S. Today we are hoping to accomplish uh, changing out the rear brakes. So new calipers, new rotors, new pads, and new brake hoses. Uh, ordered some calipers from AutoZone that should be here today. Uh, I'm gonna hope that they do show up so that I can get this accomplished today. Our tire off here. Oh, night. Never seized that last time too, or oiled it up. There we go. Let's jack our car up a little bit more here. I always slide the tire under there for protection. said in the last video I think I showed you this wheel um, we're gonna work on getting the caliper off here this one will be fun purely because it's got a mechanical emergency brake uh, linkage so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that undone let's take a look at what we got here for parts too my sister left me a bunch of parts uh, gonna see what our rear rotors are she's got Wagner rotors all around um, Wagner pads. She gave me enough stuff to do the front and rear brakes. Those are left over from the previous time. So these are all the parts I got here for it. My calipers are coming in. She's got some new struts too for it. It was recommended they, they need them. They're pretty bad. Um, might throw a set of rear shocks in it as well while we're working on it. All right. The first thing we are going to do, uh, because this has a manual cable on it, I am going to knock this clip out and then we are going to take the caliper off the knuckle assembly here and hopefully this cable will just kind of pop right out. We'll be able to wiggle it back and forth and get it out um, and get the slide bracket off, get the rotor off and then put the new rotor on and hopefully just wait for uh, wait for FedEx to show up with the new rotor, uh, excuse me, with the new caliper and we'll be able to put that back into play. There we go. They just walk it off. You don't want it to go boing because I don't have another one with me, so. Just be careful with it. kind of sits in there like that. The cable goes up through and locks it into place. We'll put that aside for now. I put a little coil on the cable. Hopefully that comes apart okay. Um, FedEx just dropped off our calipers and our brake hoses. So I am going to try and uh, see if we can crack these caliper bolts loose. They're 14 millimeter six point bolts. Oh my God, those are on there good. All right, well, before we break something, let's check our box and see what we got from AutoZone and make sure we have all the parts we need to uh, put it back together before we break a bolt. <laughs> what we got here, it should be two calipers and two brake hoses. These calipers are expensive for this car too. They're unloaded, I think they were, I don't know, 100 bucks a piece roughly with a $50 core charge. I think they were, yeah, they, I mean, they were pretty pricey, so. Yo. Brand new calipers. And brand new brake hoses. Although that, those brake hoses look rather short, so we'll have to see if those actually fit. Take a look and see what we got here. I don't remember which one is which. <coughs> All right, yeah, it comes with brand new, uh, brand new hardware and stuff, so that's good. And this one actually looks like it is the correct side that we need. Let's check the other one out. Yep, left. So there we go. All right. 
Now that I've verified I have all the hardware I need, I guess it really doesn't much matter if I break a bolt. So let's see what we can do. Let's try a, a bigger ratchet on it, see if that helps. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. That's cracked loose. This one ought to be fun because how the heck do you guys get that out of there? Because the control arm is in the way. There we go. Woo! That's on there too. Tap that. There we go. All right. We've broken our slide bolts loose. What I need to do now is turn my light back on. There we go. We need to see if I can crack this hose loose and uh, get that banjo bolt out of the way. Then the caliper can come off. We'll, work, we'll worry about getting the emergency brake cable out of it. And then we will uh, work on getting the, the slide bracket itself and the rotor off. One of the issues we have here, hopefully the camera picks up on it, is that slide bracket bolt, which is also a 14 millimeter, is in the way of the banjo bolt for the brake hose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that top bolt out right here for the slide bracket that holds the slide bracket to the knuckle. And then I'll be able to get in there with a socket or something to get the uh, brake line out of the way. There we go. All right. We got our bolt coming out here. There's not a lot of room to get pneumatic tools in here, so unfortunately, this job is very is will be uh, heavily used on the uh, non-pneumatic, non-power uh, tools. There's just not enough room in here to get in there and do the job, so. Right. Take our top bolt out there and put that aside. Unfortunately, it is still stuff in the way. I can't exactly get a socket on that, and I don't think, I don't think the wrench will, I don't think a wrench will break it. It's probably too rusty. I need a little more oomph on it. Um, I don't care about the line itself. I have brand new lines. Um, what I do care about is the bolt because I don't believe I have a brand new banjo bolt. Um, so we need to be nice to that bolt. And I guess for now, see if I can get a little croil down there to kind of soak in. I have croiled this a couple weeks ago, so um, we'll do the same thing on the brake line just to help break stuff loose. I don't want to have to replace this part of the line because it's still in pretty good shape. You can see it's actually pretty, pretty clean. So. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take the lower, figure out how to take the lower bolt out, which I think I have to actually go through the control arm from what I can feel here. So we'll have to play with that. Um, so probably going to take the lower bolt out and then take the, yeah, I'm not sure. Or you know what? I can just take the, um, we'll take the other bottom slide bolt out here um, and then just kind of tilt it this way and I should be able to get a socket in. My ratcheting wrenches with me, they're home in the shop. So we're just going to use a regular old wrench here to pull these uh, slide bracket bolts out. Like I said, we have brand spanking new ones in the new calipers, or well, the rebuilt calipers. I 
think, like I said, I'll look through here. Yeah, that bottom slide bracket bolt, we're gonna have to go through that control arm. That is such a silly design. You can see those pads are pretty, pretty worn down. Those are, those have seen better days. I'm surprised they were still driving this. I'm glad they stopped. Um, so we'll work on getting that off the car. Get this emergency brake cable off. We're gonna pull this bolt for this bracket and just tip the cable up. Um, what I did discover is the emergency brake cables don't seem to work. I don't know if it's because the caliper is gummed up or if the cable itself is actually rusted, which is probably more likely, so. Normally, normally I wouldn't want to put any tension on this brake hose. I'd be hanging this caliper up, but this brake hose is done. I've got brand new ones, so I'm not too worried about it, but you can see this caliper is, it's uh, it's seen better days, so I'm glad we've got some replacements um, for it. So now the last piece to get this caliper off, I've got to get a bucket and slide it underneath for any residual fluid that drips out, and then we've got to take this bolt off. Then the caliper can come off. I've got one more bolt here for the slide bracket. Then hopefully the rotor comes off without too much of a fight. Um, I do see that this had screws in it at one point. Um, and somebody has drilled it out, not me. So hopefully this rotor comes off easy. We'll clean up the hub. We'll put the new rotor on, new slide bracket, new pads, new caliper, and we'll go to the other side. Got ourselves a tomato can there, and we've got a 12 millimeter bolt, a 12 millimeter socket on there. Definitely some odd sizes on this car that I have found. <coughs> oh yeah, the boot is ripped on that caliper too. Go, there's our banjo bolt. Oh, I see. All right, got pins in there like that. <coughs> dumping the brake fluid out, dumping the brake fluid out of the caliper and into the tomato can here. Given the fact that I don't see a lot of brake fluid coming out of here, or even barely dripping out. I'm gonna say this hose is probably shot, which is why I bought new ones. So, that aside for the moment. Yeah, you can see the boot is even ripped on the caliper itself. So, it's time to go. All right, just position that under the hose. We gotta get a wrench and see if we can break that free without too much trouble. Got a 10 millimeter wrench we're putting on this guy here. And I did croil it, but what I would advise is to rock it back and forth once you crack it loose. So if it does get hung up, we don't. what we don't want is we don't want it to twist this metal brake line because then that metal brake line will be no good. So what we need to do is just gingerly work it back and forth until it frees up. If it binds, you know, tighten it back up, loosen it up until you work some of that croil we sprayed on it in earlier. That seems to be going relatively smooth. Um, this side will probably be the worst side just because the other side has been changed within the last year or two. And I know my dad did it, so he uh, he never seized everything and did it the right way. So uh, that side should go easier than this side. Have our metal brake line disconnected. We'll just let that hang out there. We're gonna probably have to either get a pair of pliers or something just to work this clip out here that's holding the line in. And there we go. Just get backwards. Might, like I said, we might have to get a pair of pliers because the clip is pointed this way, so I can't, it's not like I can tap on it to get it out. Just got a pair of little vice grips here. I have to tighten them a little bit. damage the clip. Just walk it back and forth a little bit. And I don't have a lot of pressure on it. There we go. So there's your clip. Put that aside. Now hopefully this line comes out. 
may have to tap it a little bit. There we go. All right. Oh yeah, that line has definitely seen better days. Put that off to the side. One last bolt to come out of this slide bracket and then this bracket will come off and the rotor will come off. After quite a bit of persuasion and the way I got that bolt out, it's unfortunately rounded, um, not by myself, but whoever was in here last, like I said, bolt was drilled out here. So somebody's been in here at one point in time. Uh, what I did, because you have to go through this control arm in the back, I took my, I don't know, three, three pound hammer and I just worked the caliper slide bracket back and forth a little bit. I put a little heat to it and I was able to uh, loosen it up and actually it looks like the rotor is going to pop off too. So I think we are looking pretty good here to get this side taken apart. Bracket's off, rotor is off, that dust shield looks wonderful but we're going to leave that alone for the moment. Um, we'll clean up the hub assembly which doesn't feel like it's got any play in it so that's good. Um, like I said we'll clean that up, put the new rotor on and start putting this back together. You see this rotor has definitely seen better days. Pretty heavy rust, hasn't been working in a while, definitely needed to be replaced. Pads, same thing, those have been worn quite a bit so glad we have all brand new hardware for this. this. Okay we got our hub cleaned up. I just took the little uh, grinding disc wheel here and cleaned all the rusty stuff off of it and then we used a little bit of 3M brake clean just to uh, you know clear all the debris off and I've just got a rag, a shop rag. We're just going to clean it up here and I am going to put the, uh, we're going to open up the rotor and figure out which one is which. I will have to go out and chase another bolt because this one's pretty rounded and I don't really want to put that back in. Uh, but we can get largely most of this back together without having to put that lower bolt in because I can put that in after through the backside. These are our Wagner rear rotors here. Um, this is a part of our, oops, I uh, BD125611E. Um, these are the rear rotors. I think my sister bought these off of Amazon. Like I said, she had started to fix the car and decided not to, uh, or decided to have the car, was going to have the car fixed and then decided not to because there was other issues with it. And so she has a bunch of parts that she gave me. Brand new rotor, still in the package. Before we put this on, we're gonna come over to our hub here and take a little never sees. And you could use fluid film or really anything. Um, but I use never sees, that's what I was taught to use. And we are just gonna get it there. I just put a little around the hub and I'll clean this up here. This is just a new can, so it's kind of globby. And I just put a little bit on the, hub, on the hub itself just to keep the rotor from seizing to it. And it makes it much easier if you or the uh, next guy who changes it so it doesn't you don't have to work quite as hard to get the rotor off we'll clean up around the cap here there we go perfect now we will go and take some more brake clean because we need to clean all the oils off of our new rotor here a little bit of brake clean and a clean rag. You've seen me do this in other videos. I do front and back. Gets all the machining oils off. There we go. And now it's ready to put on a car. Here, and we need to line it up. So, it should go on something like this. Because if we still had the correct holes in it, or the uh, the factory screws, we would be able to put those back in, but we don't. So it's supposed to go on that way too. All right, that is on. We're gonna get a 
lug, I'm going to use a lug to hold it in place. If you don't have the factory screw, and this is only going to go down so far because it's an acorn screw, but it will help keep it in place. There we go. Okay. This dust shield is very rusty and might get in the way. We'll change out at a later date. I don't have them. I didn't realize they were rusty, so. so it's not touching the rotor. Just wipe this down again. There we go. All right, now, now this is the fun part, is putting the slide bracket and everything back together um, and getting the uh, emergency brake cable and all that stuff done. Uh, that's the fun part. All right, unfortunately, again, I lost my audio with this darn GoPro. Um, what we are doing in this part of the video is I am disassembling the new or remanufactured caliper from AutoZone and I've taken the slide bolts out now and I'm going to put the uh, slide bracket hardware on the uh, on the new caliper or slide bracket and there are directions you have to follow so look at your old as you do this uh, look at your slot your old slide bracket that you took off the car so that you can make sure things go in the right direction. Um, there are, on this particular car, there is a direction to them. Uh, if you look at the slide bracket, it makes an L, and that is how the uh, bracket or the slide, the little metal tabs have to go. Uh, in this situation, on this car, uh, I did not put the pads in the slide bracket because they continued to pop out uh, before I mounted it on the car. So we mounted the slide bracket on the car before we put the pads in. Also make sure you remember to put a little grease on the uh, slide bracket, uh, the little metal tabs that go in there and on the ears of the pads so that they slide back and forth freely and they do not, um, they don't, uh, they don't freeze up on you. So we're using some CRC brake, uh, ceramic brake system grease. Uh, put a link, I'll put a link to that in the description. And just putting a little bit of grease on the pads. I did try to fit them in before I put the bracket on the car uh, and found that they would continually pop out because there's no there's no stop for them. So, all right, here we are working on putting the slide caliper, or excuse me, the caliper slide bracket back onto the wheel knuckle assembly on our 2005 Mazda 6. I've got the slide bracket bolts. I'm putting a little bit of Never Seize on. Um, just like in my other brake videos, I put the I start with the top bolt when I put these back together. Uh, you can see I don't have the pads in yet because on these brackets there are no uh, stops to hold the pad in place, so they kept falling out. So I, I left them out and I put them on after after I get the uh, bracket on the car. Um, there we go. You can see I, I ended up on this one because uh, I'm not driving it home quite yet. I stuck the bolt, the bottom bolt in the top instead because it's a little rounded and I'm going to order another factory OEM mount from Mazda. Um, and one trick to get the bottom bolt in and out is to get a long, uh, I have a 14 millimeter impact socket. Instead of trying to use a stubby extension, it fits right through the control arm and onto the bolt. It's much easier than trying to use an extension on it. And uh, you know, and then you can then you can break it loose and tighten it up, etc. So that was how I got the bolt in and out on that bottom half of it. Um, so we got we've got the bracket on at this point. I'm tightening up the bolts, and then we'll move on to putting the pads. We've got the uh, pads back in the slide bracket. I've got a little grease on the ears so that they slide back and forth freely. Um, you can see I've got these little spring clips here. Uh, I ultimately ended up putting those on after I put the, uh, or in the product, it's, it popped off right there. Um, those are very tricky to get on. Um, I ended up putting the, they're, they're like a V shape and they sit in the caliper and, uh, excuse me, they sit in the pads uh, and put pressure from uh, on the pads against the rotor. They're your anti, basically your anti-rattle clips, I believe is what they are called. Um, what I ended up doing was when I got ready to put the caliper on the slide bracket, I held the pads and then I put the spring clips in 
and then I put the caliper quickly over the top of it. Uh, otherwise, everything goes boing uh, like a spring because they, they're essentially a spring. And that is how I got them on. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but not the worst set of brakes that I've done in the world. So uh, that is where we we uh, you'll see me. I put the caliper on just to just to hang out there while I'm working on getting the uh, getting the emergency brake cable and brake hose back together. Uh, the emergency brake cable actually comes off pretty easily and goes back on pretty easily. You hook it through the fingers on the back of the caliper, and then there's a little bracket with, I believe it's a, it's either a 12 or 14 millimeter bolt that holds holds it on with a clip. Um, it's actually probably one of the easiest emergency brake cables I have done on a Ford Mazda product over the years. We're going to work on putting the emergency brake, not the emergency brake. We're going to work on putting the hydraulic brake hose back on. Uh, it's a Duralast part number 71446, and I got it from AutoZone. I think they were, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks a piece. I bought, uh, they're, they're universal, so one side, one, one hose, one part number fits both sides. And there is a little bit of a key to the hose, uh, so it doesn't just fit right in the bracket. I do put a little never seize on it just because uh, it makes it easier to come out later on and you know we're up in the rust belt here up in Massachusetts Rhode Island area so things corrode pretty quickly um, so now I'm putting it back in the bracket there and uh, we'll, we'll get it on and put the clip in and then tighten up the, the metal brake line to the rubber hose assembly. There we go, we've got the clip back into place. We've just tapped it in a little bit with a hammer. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Tightening up the brake line. And now we're gonna put it on to the caliper. Uh, I did have a little trouble with the Duralast uh, brake line hose. There's a little tab that sits into the caliper uh, that kind of locks it in place and I had to bend it in a little bit. It was bent out too far. So you might have to do that to get it to line up in the caliper properly. And then I put two brand new crush washers on, one under the bolt, and then I put the line on the bolt, and then I put one more crush washer on and tightened it down to the caliper. Uh, I believe, again, it was either a 12 or 13 millimeter bolt that was used for the banjo bolt. Um, and it was not too bad to, to get back on the car. To rebleed your brakes when you were done. Um, I will try to show that on the other side when uh, I finish up. I don't know if I'll get to the other side today. It's actually really cold out and uh, I have a, a bit of a commute home uh, where, from where the car is located. So I'm going to try and get the other side done today. It may be another weekend before I actually get to bleed the brakes. Um, so uh, you will have to bleed the brakes when you are done with this job if you're changing the caliper and the caliper hose. Quickly before my battery dies here, we uh, got the driver's side rear done came out pretty good and uh, I am working on bleeding it uh, right now I just gravity bled uh, this uh, this side a little bit what that means is I just leave the bleeder screw cracked a little bit until I see fluid and then I close it and then I can grab uh, a buddy and help uh, you know pump the pedal up and then we'll see if there's any air in it uh, I don't have a power bleeder at this moment so we're just doing it the old school way but you can see uh, we got it back together, looks pretty good. And uh, you know, once we get it bled, it should be drivable.